All right, this is Peter with CalcBook, and today we're going to be looking at composite member designs. So what exactly is a composite member? Well, there's three typical types of composite members. The first is a steel shape that's filled with concrete, like a tube steel. This can be either reinforced or unreinforced. The second would be a steel member that's encased in concrete, like a wide flange. And then the last one would be a steel member with a concrete deck. And this is kind of a typical construction method for metal deck floor systems. And today we're going to be focusing on the last one, a steel member with a concrete deck. So what affects the moment capacity of these types of composite beams? Well, the first is the analysis method. So whether or not you're going to be using the plastic stress distribution method, or if you're going to be using a, a superposition of elastic stresses. The second one would be uh, the composite action, so whether or not you're fully composite or partially composite. And the last one would be the length, material properties, your effective width, those sorts of things. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example problem. So we're going to be looking at a steel member with a concrete deck. It's a W14 by 74. It has a 30 foot uh, span from center to center of supports. The spacing between adjacent beams is 10 feet. It has a dead load moment of 325 kip feet. It has a live load moment of 225 kip feet. The deck is oriented perpendicular, so it's going left to right in the image on the screen. The concrete deck thickness is three and a half inches. The uh, metal deck height is three inches. And the width of the metal deck flutes is 2.5 inches. And we're gonna be using one inch diameter stud anchors. And we're gonna go ahead and check the, uh, the capacity of, the, of this composite beam. So let's go ahead and open up CalcBook. So we're going to go ahead and open up our steel module. We're going to click our member design, and then we're going to click into our composite member design module and just do flexure for this video. So we're going to select our standard shape. We're going to use a wide flange. We have a W14 by 74. And then we're going to go ahead and click into our composite flexure design tab. So now we've got that all set up, we can start to enter in the parameters that we have. So we have a length of 30 feet. And remember, that's a, a distance from center to center of supports. We have a distance of 10 feet between adjacent beams. We have a perpendicu perpendicular uh, metal deck. Our thickness of slab is going to be 3.5 inches. Our deck rib height is going to be 3 inches. And our width is 2.5 inches. And we're going to use normal weight concrete and 4,000 PSI concrete. Then for the stud anchors, we're going to be using a 1 inch diameter anchor, and we're going to be using one anchor per row. And then we need to enter in how many number of stud rows we have. And so this is going to be from the location of zero moment to the location of maximum moment. So for us, we're going to assume this is a simply supported beam, and that means half the distance of the beam. So it's going to be 15 feet. So we're going to assume that we have anchors every six inches. So that's going to be a total of 30 anchors. Now, when we do that, it's going to give us a warning here. We can open that up, and it's going to indicate that the section is partially composite. Um, and so we'll, we'll come back to that. But basically, right now, it's just saying that we don't have enough anchors to transfer the full load uh, between the steel and the concrete. It will design a, a partially composite section, uh, but we will likely change this to a fully composite section when we get to this part of the calculation. So now we can go ahead and enter in our demands. We have a dead load of 325 kip feet and a live load of 225 kip feet. All right, and then we can start to go through our calculations. So we're gonna check our web compactness to see that we can still use the plastic stress distribution, which we can. And then we wanna de determine the composite action type. So we determine the capacity of our stud anchor. So we use the factors from the tables in the book. We get our total capacity of those 30 anchors, which is 918 kips. And then we compare that with the capacity of the concrete section and the steel section. And what we find is that our uh, stud anchor capacity is less than the concrete or the steel, so it's partially composite. But we want to have a fully composite section, so we're going to go ahead and just double the anchors. We're going to put two anchors per row, and that's going to make us into a fully composite section because our stud anchor capacity is greater than our concrete and our steel. So the next we need to find the location of the plastic neutral axis. So first we determine if it's in the slab or the beam, right? So we determine that it's in the steel beam. So we have to do one extra step to determine if it's in the flange or the web. And then we determine that it is in the flange. So now we go into our moment capacity calculation. We're going to 
check some different variables here to figure out exactly where uh, that plastic neutral axis is in the flange. And then we figure out the distances for all of our forces. So we need to figure out the force in the slab, the force in the top flange, and the force in the rest of the steel beam. And then we can figure out all the distances that we have between those. And then we can sum up our moments about the plastic neutral axis. And finally, we get our moment capacity of 968 kit feet. And that gives us a demand capacity ratio of 0 0.77. So this design is good to go. And that's CalcBook with composite member design.